Hey everybody, it's John here. So, I want to talk to you about my thoughts about the timing of when we'll see near-term human extinction. And part of that is because I think the election is going to play a role in this. Now, I say that because the things I worry about are two-pronged. On one hand, I worry about the economy. We're currently $19.5 trillion in debt, and there's no real uh, uh, anything solution on the horizon that's going to uh, alleviate that. And the other prong is the idea that the uh, the environment is going to hell uh, rapidly, and that we're currently at 400 parts per billion, if not more, of uh, CO2 in the environment, in the atmosphere. Now, to me, these are two subjects that are, uh, strangely enough, going to come to fruition, I think, at relatively the same time, and I think one will uh, trigger the other. I don't think, uh, along those lines, that what we will see is something like the Ross Ice Shelf uh, cascading into the ocean and that causing uh, an economic hiccup. In fact, I think it's going to be the op opposite. I think uh, what we're going to see is a, uh, a problem with the economy that's going to trigger an environmental effect. And here's why, or here's how the two are uh, related. As I said, we're at $19.5 trillion in debt, and that's uh, public debt to gross... Uh, I'm sorry, let's back up for a minute. Our public debt to gross domestic product uh, ratio right now is at 77%. And they say when it gets around 80% that that's a major tipping point. Now, we've got something going on in the background currently called quantitative easing. And we are about to implement the fourth go of uh, quantitative easing. And that's supposedly going to happen shortly after the election. In fact, supposedly, the government has $4 trillion worth of cash printed up already waiting to, uh, to hit the economy. That's cash that's not really backed up by anything. I encourage you to look up uh, quantitative easing and, uh, and all of its horror stories. So how does this dovetail into my thought that it's going to trigger something in the environment? Well, as I said, I don't think we're going to wake up and find that uh, tornadoes are scouring the, uh, the planet or anything as uh, radical as that. But what I think we will see, like we saw in 2008, is that you will wake up at some point, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, or the next week, or the next month, and the stock market will have lost a major percent of its value. At that point, I think uh, things will go into play rather quickly. Because a stumble in the economy or a reduction in the value of the stock market will cause a slowdown in our industrial output, whether it's our industrial output, China's industrial output, or some other country. What we don't need is to have the economic engines stumble and pull down and slow our industrial output. The reason being, we rely on industrial output to put pollutants in the atmosphere, also known as sulfides. And it's that pollution in the atmosphere that creates what's known as a global dimming effect. We actually need pollution now to reduce the effects of greenhouse emissions on our planet. If we have a reduction in industrial output, as a result of economic stumbling, what will happen will be those sulfides will precipitate out of the atmosphere, as we saw in 9-11. When they grounded the airplanes, apparently, that caused sulfides to precipitate out and caused a slight raise in uh, atmospheric temperature. If we have something similar to that as a result of a hiccup in the economy, if the Dow Jones loses a massive amount of its uh, value, if industrial output slows or comes to a stop or pauses while the government or the, uh, the Federal Reserve or some other branch tries to figure out what's going on and how do we move forward, those sulfites will precipitate out and that will trigger an environmental uh, problem. And that might be the point where uh, you wake up the next day and it's five degrees hotter on average. But, you know it's not going to get five degrees cooler. That much we can be sure of. I 
tie this to the election because I think both candidates don't really have a firm grasp on how to stabilize the economy or how to basically get us to, back to where we need to be. In that case, I think we're in a uh, screwed or doomed situation regardless of who you vote for. Along those same lines, I think it's just a matter of time. And uh, if you're environmentally oriented, you look at the time frame as being anywhere between uh, 12 months and uh, five years as to when uh, things are really going to get bad environmentally. If you're an economically oriented person, you are operating on pretty much the same timeline as a result of this quantitative easing thing that I mentioned earlier. Uh, with the debt like it is, uh, we've got uh, maybe a few months, maybe a few years, but we can't keep spending like we have been. So as I said, it's my opinion that it'll be the economy and a, uh, a faltering in the economy that will trigger an environmental event that will ultimately bring about uh, the near-term human extinction. This is only my opinion. I, uh, I base it on a lot of videos and a lot of research that I do about the environment. Uh, and I also treat my, uh, my economic considerations the same way. I, I try to look at everything with a major grain of salt. I encourage you to take what I'm saying with a major grain of salt as well. Do your own research. Look up uh, global dimming if you don't know what that is. Look up quantitative easing if you don't know what that is. Uh, and look at the, uh, the Dow Jones and where it is and try to figure out, let me know why you think the Dow Jones is so high. Uh, if you have any thoughts about this, I really welcome them. If you have any comments about them, I welcome them as well. Uh, if you care to subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. Otherwise, I uh, look forward to hearing from you, and uh, talk to you later. Shalka 04 out. Thanks.